If you have an empty aquarium at home and you're looking for a unique display animal for it, an axolotl is a great choice. Today I'll be showing you how to set up and care for axolotls. Caring for an axolotl is very similar to maintaining an aquarium with a few very important differences. First, let's start with the tank itself. For an axolotl, a minimum size tank requirement would be a 10 gallon tank like this one, but once they get to a full adult size, which can be about a foot, I recommend upgrading them to a 20 long. Fill the aquarium up most of the way, if not all the way, right to the brim here with dechlorinated water, of course. Using water from your tap will have chlorine, so you need the conditioning drops that you can buy in any fish department at a fish store. And then you treat the water, let it sit for a few minutes, and then it's axolotl safe. Keep the temperature of the water to the low to mid 60s. Axolotls can survive in upper 60 degree Fahrenheit water, but once you hit the low 70s and especially like 74 degrees, that's when you might start running into some health issues, if not death. At the bottom of the aquarium, I recommend not using gravel because axolotls might accidentally eat it thinking it's food and then it causes impaction issues. Instead, you can use sand or nothing at all. Let's move on to the filter. These will help keep your water quality clean, and you can find them in any fish department of really any pet store, honestly. Just make sure you buy a filter that is rated for the size of the tank that you're going to be setting it up with. Axolotls don't like a lot of current, so if you use too strong of a filter, it'll create too strong of a current, but if you use too small or too weak of a filter, like this 10 gallon tank filter for a 20 gallon tank, then it won't be strong enough to keep the water clean. Most filters that you buy at pet stores come with a cartridge that slides into the back and inside that cartridge is filled with carbon and this will help clean your water for you and surrounding the carbon in that cartridge is usually a foam outlining and that foam will help strain the water and remove any gunk floating around in the water. You take that cartridge and you replace it, just throw it away, replace it with a new one every month. But a more eco-friendly version that I like to use myself is using my own filter media where I use floss it's called and you just cut it to size and slide it in and instead of carbon I use Purigen. Purigen will do the same thing if not a more thorough job cleaning the water than carbon will and this you can reactivate by soaking in a 50-50 water bleach solution for 24 hours and then of course soaking it back in normal dechlorinated water for a couple of days before using it again. So what I do is I have two Purigen packets for every one of my tanks, one to be in the filter while the other one is being reactivated, and then I can just switch them back and forth once a month, just like you would the cartridge that comes with these filters. And then I just take the floss or the sponge that's cut to size and I rinse it out and reuse it again. It's eco-friendly, like I said, and it contains a lot of beneficial bacteria on that sponge, so it's actually better for the water quality anyway to reuse it. Even though the filter will do most of the cleaning for you, it won't do all of it. So make sure once a month you do a water change where you actually manually remove some of that dirty water and replace it with new fresh water. If you just scoop the water out from the top, that's taking the cleanest water out of the tank. The dirtiest water is settling at the bottom. So use a siphon like this. It's a very well used siphon, so it's kind of dirty. Use a siphon like this one to remove that water from the lowermost part of the tank. And if you have a sand substrate at the bottom, you'll have to kind of hover this siphon head above the sand so you don't suck up the sand with the water too. When you're replacing that water, you'll of course have to dechlorinate it first before putting it into the tank. I personally use API tap water conditioner because it's very concentrated and this only takes one drop per gallon in order to treat the water. So this little bottle will last me literally a year or two with this tank. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're replacing that water, make sure it's the same temperature or as close as possible to the temperature of the rest of the water in the tank, which is again in the mid 60s. You don't want to pour too warm of water in there and put your axolotl through shock. Now is the fun part where we get to decorate the inside of the tank. Use a variety of things. They like to hide, so give them some caves. You can mix in some fake and live plants, and you can also stick in some driftwood. Just get creative. They love to climb around and they will use every inch of their tank. Today, I think we'll add a cave over here and we'll pull a Bob Ross and add a happy little cave over on this side. Then we'll add some driftwood, maybe as kind of like a hammock that he can climb up into. And finally, some plants. I'll add a fake one over there and then I'll add some live hornwort too. 
This is a free floating plant and it works great for axolotls. Of course, the most exciting part is probably adding the axolotl itself. If you're familiar with keeping aquariums, you're probably thinking that he might need a water heater of some sort like tropical fish do, right? Well, since they need their temperature to be in the mid 60s, do not use a heater actually. Just leave it room temperature in a cooler room of your house. Live plants are excellent to use in an axolotl tank because they will naturally break down the waste products like nitrates and nitrites, and they will also oxygenate the water, and they kind of just give a more naturalist look to the tank. If you're going to fill up their water almost to the top, like I did here, it's not required, but they'll use the space, so why not, right? Then make sure you use a lid, because they have been known to escape, so this will keep them contained. It's up to you whether you use the light in here or not. They prefer it to be a little dimmer, to be honest, so I would recommend, I guess, if you didn't care either way, just don't use it. But if you really do want to use the light, you can. They will acclimate and get used to the day and night cycle, and they will use their caves if needed. So if you use a light, make sure you offer them caves so that they can go into the darkness when they feel like it. I personally don't use it because there's enough natural light coming in in the nearby window, and I don't want it to be too bright for them. Feeding your axolotl is pretty easy because you have several different options. Feed them once a day, either sinking pellets, I use the Lexolotl's brand, you can also give them a complete diet by feeding them earthworms or cut up pieces of night crawlers. And for baby axolotls, you can give them either very small earthworms or live blackworms. I also recommend giving them a bit of variety and offering them treats like frozen bloodworms or frozen brine shrimp. Axolotls are pretty solitary animals in the wild, so although you can house them together as adults, babies are prone to fin nipping, so it's best to keep babies separate. Make sure to get your axolotl from a reputable breeder or a reptile show or a reptile specialty store and do a little look over on the axolotl before you take it home. Make sure it's of a proper weight and it looks healthy. The sign of a healthy plump axolotl is an axolotl that has the same width of its head as the width of its belly. But that's all there is to it. They're really hardy pets. They'll follow you around begging for food. They're fun animals to keep. So things to keep in mind would be to, of course, feed them once a day change out their cartridge in their filter or swap out the purigen, depending on which one you use, once a month, and also doing a 20% water change every other week. Well, hopefully this video helped you out, helped answer some questions on setup and care for axolotls. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.